Hey everyone and welcome back to this video where we'll be looking at the new officially provided Blender to Unreal plugin. This is just going to ease up the workflow of getting things exported from Blender and getting it over to your project inside of Unreal. So the first thing I'll provide this, these links in the description below. This is just the kind of general overview page. A few things that it will help to get you kind of started with on things like down here, it will tell you where to download this. We're needing to get this from the Git repository. It's the official Epic Git repository. So you will need to link your Epic Games account to that. And it will tell you how to do that if you haven't done it already through this link here. Once you have that, you can find the documentation if you wanted some more information. And then when you have your Git account uh, set up and ready and linked, you can then move on over to this page just here. And again, I'll provide the link down below. Now what you want to do rather than going through the different repositories, we can just simply come down and find the send to Unreal download. You can choose the version that you want to install. This is going to be the plugin that you put into Blender. I've just gone for send to UE 1.4.2 as that is the latest version at the moment. If you click on this, you'll find the download button just here and that's how you get the plugin. So this is the first step. We'll be focusing how to get this set up in Blender. So when you have all of that downloaded and ready to go, open up your Blender scene and to install plugins, if you haven't done this in Blender before, what you've just downloaded is a zip file. You need to make sure that everything is kept inside of that zip file. We don't need to actually extract that. The way that Blender works with plugins is it will just find the correct directories from the zip. So let's go over to the preferences. We'll go to our add-ons and we want to install a new add-on. When you've navigated to where you've downloaded the zip file, all you want to do is select the zip package and click install add-on. That will do everything for you. And then if we go and search for Unreal, we can see we have the send to Unreal pipeline. We just wanna make sure this is ticked. This may not be ticked by default. And then there are a few settings that will show you how we can work with just to get things flowing a little bit easier. So these are the settings that I already have on my project. I've had this installed already. So I've changed the folder. This will go into yours will look different, but it, this is where when we press export, this is the folder structure that will be created inside of our Unreal project. So I've created a new folder called game forward slash assets forward slash meshes for the meshes to be exported and then the same for animations. Then for the export settings, again, your settings may look a little bit different here. So just feel free to pause this and copy anything that you wanted to use. But I've changed the default Z up axis and X forward. So the axes are rotating properly for the unroll up and forward as well. I've done something kind of similar for the armatures. So this is if you're working with skeletal meshes and rigging your assets as well. And then I think pretty much everything else I've left the same. Uh, we don't really need to go into the import or the validation options. Having everything set like that should be perfectly fine. So if you're happy with those, then remember to go down and save your preferences. So that will work in every project you open in Blender. So that's the first part of the process done. The first step in Blender will be returning just a little bit later. Inside of Unreal, there's a few things we need to do to get this syncing up, allowing for communication between two different programs. So the first thing is we're going to go to edit and plugins. There's a couple of plugins we need to enable. If we just go to our search bar and type Python, we need to make sure that the Python editor script plugin is enabled. So mine is already enabled there, as well as the editor scripting utilities. And again, you can see the editor scripting utilities have been enabled just here as well. So once you have those, you're just going to need to restart the project. And the project, by the way, is just a blank empty project in 4.25. I'm just using the currently most up-to-date version. But once you have those enabled, restart the project. And then when you have the project restarted, we're just going to go to the project settings and we want to find the enable remote execution. So make sure that enable remote execution is also ticked. This is the bit which is important. This will allow Blender to detect your open project and send the files straight into Unreal. Also worth noting at the moment, you can only have one Unreal project open anymore. And I think Blender gets a bit confused. So just make sure you have just the single Unreal project open with those settings enabled and you should be good to go. Okay, so next step back over to Blender. A few things that we're going to do first of all. So let's just create a very simple shape and get that over to Unreal. So I'm just gonna start by creating a cube. Another thing to note here is that 
uh, the scaling's a little bit off for me because with this plugin, it does mean that it seems to be working fine if we set the unit scale back up to one. I previously had this at 0.01 .01 for the old way of getting things from Blender to Unreal. Because I've changed that back, it seems to have confused a little bit the project settings. So I'm just going to reset the transform so that the uniform scale is one. This should be a two meter cube. It's named cube. And the important thing here is that we move this from the rig into the mesh collection. So any meshes that you want to be exported from Blender into Unreal need to be in the mesh section. Any armatures, so if you were to rig this, then that would go into rig and I'll show that in just a moment. But to get started, let's just get our cube into Unreal. So we'll press pipeline, we'll go to export and we'll send to Unreal. You don't need to select anything. If I had three different cubes and only one of them selected, as long as they're all visible, so not hidden like so, then everything which is visible in the scene inside of the mesh collection will now be over inside of Unreal. So let's pop back over and we'll see what's happened. So like I've mentioned, we have a folder named assets. Inside of assets, I've told it to create a folder named meshes. And then inside of this, we have our mesh scaled at two meters, which is, I think that's two meters. Yeah, so that's a default one meter cube. So we've got our two by two uh, cube scaled properly when we export this over. So let's get rid of this. And I'm just very, very quickly going to rig a sphere. So that was so quick, you didn't even see it happen. I realized that this isn't really an important step. This is assuming that you already know how to rig and animate. But what I've done is very quickly off screen, created a simple animation. So our sphere will be doing this. Uh, I've just applied a very basic armature rig to the sphere itself. The important steps, once you have your thing rigged and animated, if you wanted an animation in there, I'm going to do the standard thing. Now this isn't needed anymore, I don't think. I think the armature being called armature is fine when you're using this process. Uh, but just out of habit, we'll re rename this and I'm going to call this one root. And like I've mentioned, the really important thing here is that we have the armature or the rig inside of the rig collection. And we need to take the sphere, which is obviously been bound to that rig. We need to make sure that we drag this into the mesh collection. So these will still act perfectly fine. They're still connected. Wherever the rig goes, the sphere will still follow, but they need to be in the correct collections when we're exporting them. Again, we don't need anything selected. We can now just go to the pipeline, export and send to Unreal. As long as you don't get any errors coming up over here when that goes away, that means that's gone through successfully. Over in Unreal, we can see we now have a new animations folder uh, as the animation is there. The mesh and everything is coming in at the correct size. If we bring in the animation, this is correctly sized as well. And if I simulate this, we can see the animation playing as it was inside of Blender. The other good thing about using this approach is that when it comes to going into the skeleton, adding things like sockets and attachments, all of that seems to have been solved as well, where you won't need to worry about the uh, the bone size and the sockets will all be scaled correctly when you're trying to make those attachments. So this is all super useful and you can see it really, really quick and is very much going to speed up your workflow. There are a couple of caveats that I found so far. So the extras, you can find out the sort of things that you would put in there in the documentation. The one thing I haven't been able to get to work, and if anybody does actually know how to get this to work, then do leave a comment down below. But I haven't been able to get the standard custom collisions working with this. I've tried combinations like putting the UC, put it in the extras and it doesn't do anything at all. It just gets the, it doesn't mention it anywhere in the documentation. And if you have, like I said, got this to work yourself, then do let me know down below. Cause at the moment I'm very stuck on that one aspect of using this plugin. But besides that, I find the plugin super useful so far. Hopefully this has helped you get started using the Blender to Unreal plugin. If it has helped or you've enjoyed the video, please do leave a like and share the video around. That really helps. And of course, be sure to subscribe to the channel to get updated as soon as any of the weekly game dev related tutorials are posted. And as ever, thanks for watching and I will see you all next time.